Okay, hello everyone, Victor Momo from Excel Moments here, and this is a continuation on the series where I break down formula solutions to Excel BI's LinkedIn challenges. And like I've said in previous videos, if you are not following the Excel BI LinkedIn page, you should if you want to boost your Excel formula and power query game. Now to the challenge at hand which I think is challenge 89. I will link it in the description and also have a link to, you know, the workbook. So it says list the numbers which occur an odd number of times. So let's understand the problem first before we talk about the solution. So when you look at this here, you can see that within this, maybe you may say string, three appears twice, two is an even number. So no, three doesn't get listed. 5 appears 3 times, so that's an odd number of times, so yes, you need 5. 8 appears twice, so no, 9 appears once. So it means the two numbers that appear odd number of times are 5 and 9, and the result is this. Okay, so that's the idea. And there are a couple of solutions, and you know, mine was even a little longer than what I'm showing here. But this is one of, you know, the elegant ones, you know, more elegant ones I saw. Yeah, <laughs> there are a lot of elegant ones, you know. But one I felt, you know, was quite elegant, and maybe I would just, um, you know, break this one down to uh, show you how it works. Okay, so let me go to the next, you know, sheet. I think I just get rid of uh, this. Okay, and we can then take it from here. Okay, so um, I would say the main working. Uh, principle behind this is, you know, maybe the frequency function. You know, really, what you do with the frequency function is, as it says, frequency, right? Which talks about how many times something occurs. So you can always use the frequency function to know how many times maybe a number occurs in, you know, a list, which is kind of like what, you know, maybe the count if would do. But uh, let me just do something here. Let's have a series of numbers. Let's just do four, three, three, five. Okay. Now you can see the couple of numbers. If you use the frequency function, you can say frequency, you pick this as your array. And then the bin array is really supposed to just be the intervals. Like if you want to know how many numbers occur between 1 and 2 or 1 and 3, then 3 and 5, 5 and 6. So you can put those numbers so it then knows, you know, how to group them. If you, instead of, you know, using just maybe say a custom uh, bin array, you select the same data you know, as you're being array, then you see something interesting. So what it does here, aside, of course, the redundant last digit that you have there, is that it looks at each of the elements. So it looks at four and sees how many times does four occur here. You can see that four occurs twice. That's the reason why you have these two. Three occurs three times. Okay, so that's why you have this three. Two occurs just once, and that's the one here. One occurs once. Now, all these numbers are repeated, right? We already had a four here, so these two accounts for it. So that's why it's showing as zero. This three is accounted for by this three. That's why it's zero. So five and six are the only numbers that haven't appeared previously, and that's why they have their one and one. So from this, we already can see, you know, the frequency of each of these numbers, okay? So what it means is that if we can split these up, you know, split this up using the delimiter of comma and space, you know, to look like this and put the frequency function, you know, around that. We should be able to get the number of times they occur. Once we get the number of times they occur, we can test if it's odd or even. And based on if it's odd, you know, we can then, you know, concatenate them. That's, you know, simply the idea. We'll start off in one cell. Once we get it working in one cell, then we can then write the formula, you know, in such a way that it sits in one cell and it spills to uh, other cells. Just to say that that's not a requirement, you know, like for the Excel BI challenges. He understands that, of course, some people may not be able to write it that way. And if you're not also using Office 365, it may not be as easy to with all the dynamic arrays. So it's not like that's the final objective. But I just feel that that's, you know, really where, you know, maybe the formulas have, you know, transited to where it sits in one cell and it spills to other cells. So let's kind of start this up. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to do a text split, right? And I'm going to split this using, okay, I need to change my keyboard. Okay, now that's fine. Comma, space as the delimiter. I could decide to even make it the row delimiter so that it spills, you know, from top to bottom. So let me skip the column and make it the row delimiter. And I'm just trying to, you know, uh, 
uh, make it obvious what's going on here. All right, so you can see that this is pretty much everything, right? So I can now do, you know, frequency of this over itself. But what I want to do is let's just keep this in this cell. Let's, um, you know, go to the next cell just so that we can have a line of sight to it. So let me, you just do a let first, say, and let's, I just give a variable, let A be, you know, that text split, okay? And now what this means is that at this point, my text split here gives me this result. I will repeat the same thing I did when I started the video, which is using the frequency function. So I will say frequency of this A comma A, which is more or less like just trying to get the count of each of, you know, those numbers within that same array. But you will see, you know, a funny result and then they're like, okay, what's going on here? Okay, so now this doesn't look anything like what you expect it to look like. So what's the problem here? The first problem really is that once you use the text split, automatically you have created text and not numbers. As you can see, these results here are left aligned. Okay, so they are not numbers, they are text. So we need to find a way to make them numbers. Okay, for this particular one, I mean, you can just perform a mathematical operation. You can use zero plus this, or you could use the double unary, right? Okay, so you see what it looks like. So I'll come back here and just change this now to, you know, using the double unary. Okay, minus minus, which is like saying minus one times minus one, which is plus one. So it doesn't change in terms of value, but the mathematical operation converts the value stored as text or number stored as text to number. Okay, so now you can see we have, you know, something close to what we want. Okay, so now what it's saying to us here is that three appears twice. 5 appears 3 times, 9 appears 1. You can see already that these are the two numbers we're interested in. These are the only two odd numbers, which correspond to 5 and 9. That's why I put them side by side. So it's obvious what's going on. So now that we have this result, you know, we can just test. Are they odd or even? Uh, you know, we can test that using, you know, the is odd function, right? So we can say is odd, you know. Give me a true if it's odd. Give me a false if it's not. Okay. So this translates into this. So we're only interested in where we have what trues, right? So anywhere we have true, you know, we need, um, you know, the corresponding number here. So what I can do is I can put an if around the is odd here and say if, you know, it's odd. Okay, so if it's odd, what do you want? I want you to return, you know, the number for me, which in this case would be either 3, 5, 8 or 9. The numbers already, of course, that result you are seeing here is what we've called the variable A because A is, you know, a breakdown of, you know, this string into the different elements. So I can say, if it's odd, give me A. If not, you know, give me nothing. Okay, so pretty much is what I want. Close the if, close the let. Okay, so you see that we have 5 and 9. Once we have this, it means we can then, you know, concatenate this using maybe say a text join and skip you know all the blanks so what i'm going to do is i come back here and i'm going to do you know text join because i can see that's the beautiful thing about you know dynamic arrays and the spew because once i see the spew i know where i'm headed so that i think was the challenge back in the day when we were using control shift enter we really could not see the calculations that were going on in between in the intermediate steps fine you could use f9 to evaluate but it's easier when it spills it to the worksheet and you can see it and I'm like, okay, this is where I am. Where am I headed? I, I found it to be, you know, much easier to get to my destination just because I can see, you know, the result of the intermediate steps. So now I say text join and I can use a comma and a space, okay, as my delimiter. And here where it says ignore empty, I'll say true, ignore empty cell so that all this will be ignored, okay? And then I can close, you know, the brackets, close the let. And now I have, you know, five and nine, which of course, if I drag down, you know, to say here, you know, I pretty much would have the results I want. There's only one thing that, you know, is probably missing here. And what's that? Is the fact that if you look at the results that have been expected, the results are sorted, right? So here, because in this string 92 comes first, my result comes out as 92, 12, and 0. But he wants it as 0, 12, 92. So it means that, you know, somewhere in there, you know, I need to what? Sort. And it would make sense for me to sort before I concatenate or do the text join. Because once I do the text join, you know, I can't sort it again. So what it means is that in here, which is before the text join happens, I will do, you know, a sort. Okay? And it's typically is going to sort ascending by default. 
right so i'm going to just do that and close the bracket so it's saying take that five and nine sort it so let's see um okay so that's the first one let's take this down okay so now you know it's fine the only challenge i have at this point at least for me i've gotten the result anyway this is the you know expected result the only thing is this is sitting not in one cell this is one cell and dragged down to other cells, right? Okay, so it's sitting in multiple cells as far as I'm concerned. So what I want is where it sits here and it spills to the other cells, okay? So this is simple and you will see this as kind of a commonality across most of the solutions I will provide here, which is where I introduce, you know, the Lambda helper function called map or you could use Biro. What he's just saying, really, and I've said this a couple of times, and I'll probably, you know, start sounding like a broken record, but it's fine because some people may not watch some other videos and they only watch this, so they still need to get an understanding of what's going on. The map is just saying, this is the transformation I have. So it means, okay, if I take, for example, the map is just saying, what do you want what I have to be transformed into, okay? So I am saying for the map, I'm a feed map with all this and I say, I want you to transform each of them to this. So what it means is this. The expression I have here is the transformation. You know, with this expression, I transform whatever I have in cell A2 to give me 5 and 9, right? What I'm just trying to do here is I want to apply that same transformation to every other cell here, A3 to A7. So I'm just saying that, you know, wherever you see in this expression A2, by the time you're applying the same formula, you know, in A3, just change that A2 to A3. For A4, change it to A4. So it's like the same thing. So this is how it works, basically. You just come and say, do a map. You give it the array, which will be all, you know, those cells. Now you pull up a lambda. You need a variable which is going to represent each of those elements at every point in time. I like to think of this variable as an iterator. That's how I like to think about it. So that variable is going to iterate through that array. So meaning the array is A2 to A7. So it means the, the iterator, if I make this X, for example, X is going to start off with the value of A2. The next time it's going through the loop is going to be A3. Next time, A4 all the way to A7. So it means that, you know, everywhere here where I have A2, I don't need to have A2 again. I just need to have X because X will represent A2 in the first step. The next time it will be A3, A4, A5, and so on. So what you're just saying is that for every element in A2 to A7, this is what I want you to transform them into, map them to this. So anyway, I see A2. That's the easiest way to transform it. Change this to X. Is there any other? That seems like it. So if that's it, you know, then that's easy enough. Okay, so we need a bracket here for the lambda, a bracket for the map. Would have a spill error that's simple, right? And then that's it. So we have, you know, our answer. So it's now sitting in just one cell. And you can see, you know, the blue rectangle around just to show you that it's a spilled array so that's how this works the building i would say yes um the, yeah the building block is really the frequency function once you get the frequency to work you know every other thing is really simple and layered you know on top of that i hope you know you, you picked up some things from you know this video and some useful i'll say information and tips you know if you like this please hit the like button you can also subscribe to the channel excel moments definitely we'll come back with you know more formula breakdowns and i hope that will help boost our excel you know formula game so please like the video subscribe to the channel excel moments for now i'm out of here